Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, this time I have an, it's not a multimeter, but a security voltage meter and it is from TGEM. And TGEM is from the US, from Ohio. And uh, actually I was not aware of this brand, but they seem to be very uh, big in all these uh, security voltage meters. And uh, I will zoom in later on the company itself. The reason that I bought it is actually what is inside. So here is the box. It was sold to me as old new stock, whatever that means. So the meter should be kind of new while, or at least unused, while uh, the rest could be very old. It is the model 110. And well, it's a date is 9121. So let's say uh, May or April in uh, 1991. So it, is already almost 30 years old, I would think. But the box is still here, it's not degraded. The yeah, this looks a bit older already. Oh. And here it is. And maybe if you look at the design of the book, maybe you understand already why for me it was an interesting meter. And if the manual doesn't convince you, then look at the color. Look at this. Okay, this is not a good sign. There is a hole melted through it. It doesn't seem to be this battery was the course. It doesn't look to be very damaged. Does the serial number match? Yes, it does. Okay. So hopefully it was a loose battery and it was not inside here. Yeah, so it is an uh, automatic function digital voltage meter. It only has an on off button. And that's all. And still it can do AC and DC. And um, let me see, it can do automatically AC DC. Of course the AC component needs to be very low to be able to measure DC. Resolution is one volt, it can go up to 750 volts. AC and DC, so. But if we look at the color, this really, really looks like a Keatley. And uh, I looked at newer models from uh, Taijem. I'm wondering that maybe it is a Keatley and, and did they work together? I don't see any Keatley on the back. But if I look at my other meter, this one, it's the 129 it has exactly the same colors and then i was looking on the internet and to find that tgen had exactly the same but then for a temperature meter so that was kind of interesting and then i wonder how is that possible because why uh, is kitley going to give his uh, stuff away and then I look on the website of uh, TGEM and uh, they said there that in 1985 so that is indeed before this they acquired the whole handheld thermometer and digital multimeters from Keatley and uh, it grows into a successful line blah 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 nice story of course and I also saw because these people are serious at least serious in buying stuff because TGM also in 1995 they bought the TM500 5000 series from Tektronix Tektronix so and they bought some other stuff it's all high quality stuff so it's kind of cool because I actually never heard from them and then they seem to buy a lot of the fissions from other companies. Kind of cool to know. So the chance is big that it actually is a Keatley inside because this is in the start and I still use the old colors. So uh, let's have a look inside. Well, aside from the manual, I also got something else. So it's very complete. 
and it turns out to be their catalog. And as you can see, the same box they used to put in other stuff too. So they were also quite smart in that sense. Product news, there is no year, but it is probably around that 91 because it was in that box again. You see, they use the same box here. They are good in this uh, voltage and temperature uh, stuff. Okay, now I want to know, is the battery, has the battery also damaged the rest of it? Because it does indeed look quite new and I don't see any brown stuff. So the battery was probably loose in its box because the serial matches the box. And uh, so hopefully it was not in there while it leaked. And also, I like to see if we can maybe see if it was a Keatley or not. Because I couldn't, I tried to look on eBay and just general Google. Uh, if I could find a Keatley 110, and I couldn't. Okay. Oh, it's clean. Very good. It is clean. Uh, very good, it seems all clean. The battery contacts seem to have been soldered. But, yeah, it's not damaged too much. So it did come with the battery. So we can have a quick look if it powers on or not. Yes, and it does. Okay, that's good. And I don't see any Keatley markings, but I also don't see any Tegan. It says made in USA, and it is the model 110. And then it says 102. 102 something. And a copyright 87. Okay, so that's not very, very clear. Would have been nice if it said Keatley somewhere. Well, we can open it a little bit more. So can we lift it? I just wonder what is inside. Oh, a lot of protection. Does it say any markings here? Yes. It already is the logo of there it is. And this board says 89. So it's indeed one of the latest. Okay, well, it just has a simple on off button. It uh, still works. And even though there is an on off here, a hard switch, there is still an auto power off, and that is uh, two minutes. And they explain even in the manual, if you like it to be 10 minutes, then you can just open it. And then close to the battery, there is an R10 and resistor R10. If you cut one of these legs, that is right, the first one right there, then the automatic shutdown is 10 minutes. And of course you can restore that. You can restore that later if you want. Cool. It's pretty modern for that time, I must say. Yeah, and it is a safety voltage multimeter, so these pins are all protected also. I think you can lock them if you want that. Let's see that now. And we should be able to measure something. Let's get the calibrator. So even though it's Cool, it works, or it, we are going to find out. I'm a little bit disappointed that it is not a Keatley because you look at the color, you look at everything, and even if you look at the history, it could have been a Keatley, and it probably was, but Keatley never had it uh, himself. Okay, so I'm putting uh, the little calibrator, the LBO2, I, I use a lot of times. You can see by default it's always in AC, and uh, when it detects DC voltage, then it starts to switch over to DC, but of course the DC, the AC component needs to be very, very low. But let's see when it starts. Uh, it can only do the full volts. 
So let's see when it uh, detects 100 millivolts. It still thinks it is just DC, so it really doesn't detect. Makes sense. Two, 300, and here a 300 millivolts. It already detects that it is DC. Oh, it is a whole digit off. That uh, I think that is correct. Go to 10. 10 volts. It is also off. Oh, I saw two pots. Oh, the two minutes have passed, so that does work. And then you need to switch it off and back on. So that works. That works. Okay. Can I go a lot higher? No. Okay. What about the AC? Let's get this one. I still have my AC source here that I got from the Euler shop. And uh, let's see. This one does go up to 300 volts, so we should be able to uh, measure things. Here it goes. Now I'm going to do something that you should not try at home, and it's just put the pins in here like this. It again switched off. Those two minutes are indeed a bit uh, short. Uh, 154, yeah, why not? Put the output on. And it says 154AC. Careful, there are my pins. So that is correct. Uh, do a little bit more. Uh, he said let's put uh, 200 volts two hundred output on two hundred uh, we should be able to go to three hundred. Here we are, 310. Perfect. So what maybe also is interesting, it does indeed touch the 300 volts. But it is not truly RMS. It is, uh, I think, average. And it is just adjusted on the sine wave that it is giving the right value. But we do have a sign here, but I wonder for the frequency because I can set the frequency also. So, what happens if we go higher? 100 hertz. It starts to give a little bit less. This two minutes is really short. Maybe I could that resist. Uh, what if we go to 200? Yeah. Two hundred. And I can go to five hundred even, I see. Five hundred hertz. And I can even now hear my transformers or the electronics making a sound of 500 hertz. <laughs> That's funny. But uh, you can see then with the lower, with the higher frequency, it just uh, measures lower. I also have my DC power supply. That one is a little bit more dangerous because it goes uh, up to uh, 3,000 volts, 3.2 kilovolts, 3.1. 
So, but uh, if I just uh, set it all very low, starting at 10 volts, I didn't put the power in, I think. Okay. Uh, output positive. It needs to be switched on for one minute, so I wait a little bit. It already detects a few volt DC, but I haven't switched my inputs on yet. Uh, it is on 10 volts. Well, we can try. Maybe it's already been. Yes, here it is, 10 volts. Also, again, one volt too high, so I can change that. Let me see, 20 volts, yes, 60 volts. Well, go to 160 volts. Yeah, 50. Two fifty DC it's more accurate. Three fifty. Now it starts to be a little bit low. Four fifty. It should go to seven fifty, it says. Here we go. 750. What will happen? Will it go to overload? No, it will even do more. Okay, that's enough. Well, most of the functions work fine. I also noticed that there is a a special holder you can hold one of your pins like this but you can also do it upside down and then you can hold with one like this and one like this and you can measure that way that's pretty smart i'm cleaning the probes a little bit because the meter looked like new but the probes absolutely not so i think they just combine a package and i don't know just made something put a nice uh, casing and the meter looks new but i think the probes really they they got some from somewhere else because how everything looks so new and these probes look terrible so that looks a lot better all clean fully functional very nice pity i couldn't find the kitley brand but to me it's very clear if you look at the colors it it was or it almost was at least so that's it the t gem that almost is a kitley and uh, it's a t gem 110 i will put it in my kitley collection because it just feels good and the color matches perfectly uh, thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time